How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. We're talking about BioNano today, and I want to talk to you about where the stock is now because it's up 12% in the pre market. I want to go about some or go over some different options that you could use if you own shares or if you're thinking about buying shares uh, in kind of what you can do going forward because I'm up nearly a thousand percent in this, I think right around 900. And you got to start thinking about exit plans and what you would do if it goes, if it keeps on going up. So before we get into it, if you guys don't mind hitting the like button, I really appreciate that. Please hit subscribe too. We're getting very close to 100,000 subscribers, so I really appreciate that. Also, there's a link down there to Webull. If you want four free stocks, all you have to do is deposit $100 and you can get up to $3,700 worth of stock. And there's a link down there. If you want to join the Patreon right now, we have BNGO that's up 12% pre-market. We have SENS, which last time I looked was up about 25% pre-market, now 26%. And we also have TMDI. These are just some of our penny stocks. And this one's up 18% pre-market. So if you want to be able to jump in, get in on some penny stocks, we have a lot of long-term stocks too. Green energy, we have we have different kinds of EV plays too. Definitely check out the link down there. There are 4,400 other people in there. They're always trying to find the next best stock. So definitely check that out down below if you haven't already. Thank you and let's get into it here. So BNGO is up 12% pre-market. We're up right around $11, we passed it earlier. There's one big thing that I think is the reason for this. We have BioNanogenomics uh, announcing their $230 million underwritten public offering of common stock and full exercise of underwriters option to purchase additional shares. So this all went very smoothly. It's, it's interesting how when they close this, typically the, the share price has been going up recently. They sold 38 million shares and then they also had 5 million shares sold pursuant to the underwriters exercise in the full of their option to purchase additional shares. Now this was at $6 a share. Now we're sitting around 11, almost double what they sold these shares for. We also got some news Friday that an analyst had upgraded or had increased his target price for BNGO. Jason McCarthy, a success rating uh, that's pretty high. You can see here he has an average return of 56%. A uh, five-star analyst from Maxim, he gave them a price target of 14. Now, this was just Friday. We still have some old price targets. This is on tip ranks, by the way. We have some old price targets that were from over a month ago. And uh, a lot of the time with these analysts, they don't upgrade their price targets very often. And then when they do, they just kind of have to up it a little bit higher than the share price is now. I don't know how these people get away with this because they just increase it 1400% and everyone's cool with it. But we'll see what happens with these two analysts or if anyone else covers it. But I like the fact that Maxim gave it a 14. Now with these stocks, again, like I've talked about this before, I don't give my price target too often. I say that, okay, it could do this or it could do that, but I don't like giving a price target for even like any amount of time a week from now a month from now a year from now a lot of the time with these stocks they're moving up on speculation they're moving up on hype so it's really hard to know when it will end or how high it will go so that's just something that i consider now there are a couple different options that you have to kind of secure profits or hold and i'll go through them in a second but if you're looking at buying the stock <clears throat> and i might cover a couple other stocks today that I think that, that I think we should go through. If you're not buying the stock or if you haven't bought the stock but you're thinking about it, let me ask you this. Did you know about it when it was one or two dollars? Why didn't you buy in if you knew about it then? Was it because you thought it was too expensive? Was it because you didn't know about the technology? Was it because you didn't have cash on hand? If it was that you didn't do enough research or that you didn't have enough cash on hand, I could see an argument for buying in now because you have the knowledge or the actual means to buy in. Now, if you didn't buy in because uh, you just didn't want to look into the company or you you thought that it moved up too quickly or something like that, I don't think that's a good reason to buy in now because then you're just buying in because it's moving upward. And at any time, it can come down. We've seen that constantly. It'll go up you know, 60% in a day and then come down 30%. So 
I would be careful about buying in now just because it's moved up a lot. So <laughs> that's what I think there. But if you just didn't have the means or if you hadn't looked into it enough or something and now you feel comfortable with it, I could see a case for buying in. Now, where do I think it's going to go from here? Again, I don't know. And I don't think anyone knows. But this company is being valued a lot higher than it was a month ago. So right now, I think that's something to consider. Now, what could you do if you own it right now? First of all, you could just sell it. So don't pay attention to this. I just I just typed in what you could do. Uh, you could sell it, right? You could take your profit, especially if you bought in around one, two, three, four dollars a share. That's a lot of profit. For me, this is by far the best performing stock that I've ever had. And I'm up 800% or 900%. I bought in at $1.25. If we get up to a dollar or $12.50, I'll 10x my money. I am not believing in this yet. I could make a good case for it because we're up so much. Uh, you have to take into account taxes and stuff like that too, in case you're not doing this in a tax advantage account. The other option that you have, uh, because this one doesn't give you any exposure to the stock anymore. So even if you believe in it, you're selling out because you think it's overvalued or that's going to fall. I've heard some people suggest sell and buy back in when it hits $6. It's going to fall down. Just sell and buy back in. That's what they're saying. Now, I've never believed this. I've never believed in selling and then waiting for a dip and then buying back in. I mean, some stocks you can see it constantly goes like this and you can try to time it. But anything long term, anything that you really like the look of, I don't ever want to sell it and try to buy back in. I mean, try to do that with Tesla. Try to do that with uh, any good growth stock, Amazon, Google, anything that grew a lot over the last five or ten years. I think it would be very difficult to do that and you're probably almost as well off just holding it in a stock that you really believe in. Now, the other thing is we don't, we just don't know if it will fall back down, right? I mean, you could have said that on so many penny stocks recently and they just don't fall. Like there's a resistance. People want to buy in because they've been waiting to buy in. They see it drop 20% for this, that, or the other reason and then they buy back in or people that already own it just add shares. And I think we'll start to see some institutions buying this because, again, like this is much more expensive than it was, but it's still under a $2 billion company. So it doesn't take much to prop it up or to push up the stock price. The next thing you can do is take out your cost basis and maybe some profits if you want. This is something that I've been considering doing. And this is this just locks in the fact that you won't lose money on the stock. And I've done this before on a couple different stocks, ones that I found very speculative uh, some different EV SPACs, and you can take out what you initially put in. For me, that would only be 10 or 12% of the investment now. And then you can also take out some profit if you want to. You can pick out any number you want. If you're up you know, 600%, you can take out maybe double. So you at least get double what you put in. Maybe you're, you're thinking, okay, this is one month, so I'll just take out like 5% or something, and that's still a great return, 5% in a month. You could do this. Now, this reduces your exposure. This is something that I'm considering doing right now. I will definitely consider it if it goes up to 10x my money. It's very close to that now. I might just take out 10% then or even 12% or something like that and just let the, the rest of it ride. Now, of course, your upside is less, but at this point when it's up 10x, it doesn't affect it that much because it's not like we're taking out 50% of the investment or anything like that. The last thing you can do is hold longer. And this is what I'm doing right now. So you believe in the company, you want to hold it, you've already done your research, you're okay letting it ride, you realize that you could lose money. Most likely you won't lose everything unless you're leveraged or on margin or anything like that. And you realize, okay, I'm going to have to update my opinion whenever it moves up and down. But that's kind of what I'm doing now. That is exactly what I'm doing now. I'm considering taking profit if it keeps on moving up and just taking out my original cost basis just to lock that in. Then I'll be even less emotional about the stock. Like I try to be unemotional already. Uh, I think I think some people think I'm emotional because I get excited, but I'm getting excited at what's happening from the company, not getting excited because we're making all this money. I mean, that always helps. But I hope you understand what I'm saying. Like I'm getting excited because what we're doing is making a huge difference 
uh, we're helping out people. So that that is exciting for me. But let me know your thoughts on this down below. Let me know what you're doing on BNGO or any of these other penny stocks. I might do this with SENS or TMDI later today because they're both up a lot too. And feel free to check out Patreon down below. Again, if you want to see exactly what I'm buying or selling in real time right when I do it, definitely check that out. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for checking out Weeble. And if you want to see the video that I did on another penny stock that I'm not buying, but a lot of people are talking about, I'll put it up here on the end screen. Then I'll also put one here on five stocks that I think could double. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.